Have you ever wanted to go camping with your family, but you're afraid that your tow vehicle is maybe too small or underpowered to tow a big fully fledged trailer? So today I'm gonna go to Manhattan Beach to see the Bolus Rivet. The Rivet is the brand new trailer from Bolus and it's a 25 foot trailer that only weighs 2,500 pounds. With that weight, you're able to tow it with small SUVs, minivans, even a Model Y. So it's really a great trailer for those that want a full size, full fledged trailer, all of the amenities, yet they can tow it with basically any vehicle. Yeah, feel free Let's to, go. to go around and ask me any questions that you might have. Well, the first thing I'm noticing, seeing it in person and being at that weight, it's a lot bigger. Yes. Than most trailers yes. at that weight. It's still 25 pounds, so it's about half the weight of a comparable length travel trailer. And that's because of how it's built. So we start with that all aluminum frame, and then we're still using 2024 T3 aluminum, which is the same aluminum that aircrafts are made from. Mm -hmm. And then we rivet that all together with true bucked rivets. So those are all 5,000 pound bucked rivets, and that creates that really strong exoskeleton. And then from there, everything gets built from the inside out. And that's the um, the similarity with the Cybertruck is that exoskeleton, mm. where the strength is coming from the exterior, mm -hmm. as opposed to um, the frame itself. And you're, yeah, so the frame. Think of it almost like you're saying, like a like a um, race car. The frame is just holding yes. that shape of yeah. the exterior, yeah. and then that exterior strength is coming, and that's all the way from the beginning why it's so lightweight because we're not starting with a solid frame yeah believe it or not my truck was sideswiped oh really like oh, three sorry. weeks ago oh, gosh. but you look at it and there's not there's no oh, damage you didn't wow that's wild because of the strength yeah the exterior strength there's yeah. no dance no i mean yeah. plastic pieces broke but right I have to say, I do love the little, like the porch. Yeah, and it, that's the door in the front again for those aerodynamic reasons. So you can kind of think of everything we do starts with aerodynamics and starts with lightweight. And then we work out how to make this a 25 foot full size towable in every other way. I know it's not a, for a lot of people, they probably don't even notice it. But the fact that you have just normal. Commercial grades, exactly. Yeah, the, I mean, the, you're used to just a little the, flimsy. The, yeah, the yeah. little, the, the door handles on most normal trailers or RVs. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't feel secure. No. And so all of them are all electric, but you do have the option to add propane, which would power the heating off grid. So that's something that you would probably do if you were going winter mm -hmm. camping. Mm -hmm. um, extended off-grid times where you're gonna need to power that heat and that's just this removable propane tank on front. And that is only powering the heating, every other appliance inside. So we've got induction um, in the cooktop, lots of storage and you'll notice all of our storage is down below and that's for handling reasons. So it's not up above and that um, you know means that that center of gravity is low. Mm -hmm. So towing is a lot easier and that's what you want and that's what you want yeah, and it's that, want that same width as the tow vehicle too so anywhere your vehicle can go the tires follow in the tread so you're not worried about taking a turn extra wide or um, anything else like that and then you can sleep or so this side does convert into a bed as well so you can sleep you know the kids here I'll be honest with you I thought it was gonna be tighter than it is. It's and also when you if you want to sit down, like you'll see just how how big it is when you sit down. It doesn't feel like you know you're you're at a comfortable conversational distance, especially for an RV. That's no. This is I'm shocked how spacious it is. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I love is that you guys are using wood. Real wood, yes, and so not laminate. We don't use any <laughs> laminate in here. We have all anodized aluminum where you see aluminum and then the rest is um, the rest is wood. I'm 6'2". So we've got 6'4 height inside and you're probably wearing your shoes. With shoes and my hair is a little feet. long. I need a haircut. And there's plenty of headroom. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't matter because you're sitting you're down. You're sitting, exactly. 
And so you're able to keep that really aerodynamic shape and not compromise usability. And then the cool part about the bathroom is it's away when it's not in use. So what you would do is you would open this door to shut off the door to the bedroom, and then you would open this door, and I can switch with you. And so now you, you have and now you your have own private space. Be bedroom or bathroom that's not um, taking up floor plan when not in use. Yeah, once again, it's it's a lot, it has a lot more room than, I mean, that, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even realize the shower goes in more. Oh, yeah, the shower goes in even more, and it is a sit-down shower for anyone who's, you know, comfortable yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think a sit-down shower, you know, seeing a bench in almost every luxury shower these days, too, right? So. Yeah, that's, people ask for that. Right, exactly. So. It's, you, I think it, it. it's a compromise, right? But, yeah. you know, you got to make some compromises when you're RVing. And I think the amount of time you're spending showering to have that shower seated is well, an easy compromise, in my opinion. Here, um, and back. then bedroom in the back, which is that king bed. And then you do have, obviously, wood blinds in the tail and uh, blackout yeah. shades and all of that. This reminds me of like a yurt. Oh, in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. In a very good way. Yeah, the way that wood comes together is very zen, right? Yes. And you kind of feel like you're in a little cocoon or something yes. like that. And we use all hydronic heating systems, so that has, um, you know, uh, hydronic antifreeze that's circulating around. And because everything's inside the shell, you'll notice when we go outside, we can look underneath, but that's fully enclosed too, so you don't have to worry about winterization as long as the inside is kept warm so you can use it in that four seasons of camping and all of that. Um, and that probably also helps with less moving parts, yes. less things to break. And we make everything ourselves so that everything has a part number on the behind of it. So if you need something that we make, you take, you know, this piece of wood off and it has a part number etched on it because like I said, we make so much of our own components. So that's able to be you know, repurchased and reinstalled. And this, I don't know if, how much of our story you know, but this comes from, Bolus is a 1930s brand. And mm -hmm. We had a vintage Bolus that we restored and that comes from the love of the product and how we restored it. So we want this product to be able to be one lifetime type of purchase to yeah. be able to be restored, not to be like an RV that lasts about five to six, three to seven and then you're flipping it even though you financed it for 20. We want it to be, you know, <laughs> lasting that yeah. full payment and, yeah. and if customers are trading to a different bolus, that's great, but I don't ever want it to be because, you know, their RV isn't holding up the way they thought it would. Now, with that all being said, how, how are you guys structured for service? So we have national service network and okay. that's through a dealership network. So okay. we have over 30 uh, service locations okay. nationwide and okay. over six dealership locations nationwide as well. Okay. And we're, you know, always growing. So six okay. right now. Okay. Yeah. So then that relieves anybody from that, well, bolus, but we're, you know, they don't, not everybody sees a dealership on every corner. Of so course. Having course, 30 locations, I mean, that's that pretty should good, be able to pretty good nationwide coverage. Like of course, it's not on every corner, but um, but that's okay. That's okay. You yeah, know, it's, it's an RV dealer, and yeah. and a lot of these issues we're also able to you know help remotely. Usually, it's you know a new customer figuring out how to use their RV for the first time, which mm -hmm. you know is always the new product. Something you got to learn. It's like buying a boat or something like yeah. that, right? You got to figure it out. And quality control. Mm -hmm. I know watching your videos and looking into you guys, you guys really go through before delivering one of your trailers, you guys, yes. can you go through that process? Yeah, for sure. So we do a 251 or eight, 251 point inspection, and that goes through every system to make sure it's working. And then it's QC at each point in the line. So before it gets from one position to the next, that's being QC'd at that point. So we're not getting all the way to the end and then finding out um, you know, something's not working and that's how traditional RV would work is it would get all the way to the end and then maybe it would get fixed or maybe it would just get shipped to dealer and dealer would fix that. 
Uh, because we sold direct for over 10 years and did all the service ourselves, these units are getting delivered to dealers or customers in you know, quality control checked um, condition. And you can even see from the way we build that that's super important to us. Well, I have a quick little story. So when we bought our trailer, first camping trip, no hot water. Okay. And I'm going crazy trying to figure out what is wrong? Mm -hmm. Why is there no hot water? Mm -hmm. It literally was, I had to find the tanks. Mm -hmm. They didn't turn it on. Oh, wow. Something as simple as that, yeah. right? And just they just missed sets it. Sets up your first trip. Yeah. And, and I guess, I, I get it that things get lost, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I get that. But they just needed to turn a little knob. That's frustrating. And I had to dig around and find the tanks mm -hmm. and valves and yeah you know so that's one thing that i appreciated when i seen on your website that you guys do that mm -hmm. i go it's that really is really needed nice. because yeah. i feel like a lot of they just pump them out and it's a, you know it's a different it's a different business almost right yeah, yeah, three publicly traded companies we're still small and privately held and so you know we get to kind of answer to a different use case and yeah. different proposition than others do and we feel lucky yeah. to do that yeah. no that's i like that because I, I think of that. I go back to that mm -hmm. story and I go, if someone would have just checked, it, you know, because yeah. you're at, you're on your trip and first trip, family's it's excited, important. everybody's right, excited. Course, and then course. it's like, kids can't take a hot shower. Right, right. And I'm going crazy trying yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is really nice. Yeah, I would like to see that under yeah. belly. So if you look just underneath, you won't find any you know, exposed wires oh, yeah. or anything like that. It's completely enclosed in aluminum. And then you have the arrow move um, on the left-hand side as well. And this is interior storage. And, uh, yeah, see, that's... I, it's just, a, like you said, it's, it's, in, it's a totally different way of building. Mm -hmm. Different way of building, different different way of thinking about that design challenge you and I talked about at the beginning, which is how do you build something from the beginning that's lightweight and aerodynamic, and then you don't have to have a workaround to solve the problems of building something heavy and not aerodynamic if you start from that proposition. Um, same thing for the width. You know, people sometimes say, why is it not as wide as other RVs? Well, that's so it fits behind the tow vehicle, mm -hmm. so you're not having, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. same... the drag. The drag. Yep. And everything has to do with that drag. Even the door, it has that, that rounded front surface area, so that really the only surface area that's exposed um, oh, yeah. on the RV is really just from the window up, if you think about it, because it's the same width as the tow vehicle. And it's only having, you know, anything above that tow vehicle that's actually exposed to drag, mm -hmm. um, which really is that number one thing that's affecting range. That's a, even if you're in a gas car, affecting um, miles per gallon. Yeah. No. This is um, now. Is there? Are there any plans to do self propulsion, or is it? The self-propulsion of the axle, you mean? Yeah. So we do have the the aero move, which is self-propulsion, but while right towing? now, no, not while towing, no, okay. only while unhitched. Uh -huh. um, but I think when you really look at it, we're getting 235 miles per charge on a Tesla X. Mm -hmm. That's 73 percent of range. Mm -hmm. um, that's more than enough range to get from tow place to tow place. So at this point. We're really happy with what we have, especially given everything else in the market. We have lots of customers and enjoying this EV vacation. Okay. And then solar, because I know that's one thing that you guys um, talk about is the fact that you can go boondock and yes. you pretty much have infinite time, depending on yes. usage, obviously. So you've got the 400 watts of solar up on the roof. You can add another 230 watts of solar um, through the solar panels. And then um, you also have eight kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. And so that's really, that's really um, you know, enabling you to have that big battery game to run from. The AC can run from it, the heating can run from it, all of those types of things. And then another thing, how you don't have a traditional air conditioner on top, on the roof Correct. of it. Yeah, so it's inside the unit and it's vented to each room. Um, so really efficient 
disbursement of, of heat and all of that type of stuff. So, mm. yeah, that aspect of it is really great. To it. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. If we're going to do this properly, though, I got to <laughs> What was your name? I'm Jonathan. Jonathan, Chico, Eric. Man, no, you're fine. So Jonathan's saying two minutes, right? Two minutes. Two minutes. All right, so it's light enough so that I can move the whole trailer myself, right? I don't need like to get the car perfectly under the ball. Which is a huge plus. Which is a huge deal. No, no weight equalization, hitches, nothing like that. A goose neck for a fifth wheel. Just jockey wheel up. A couple of safety chains. Minute 41. Oh, minute 41. All right. <laughs> I've done faster. I've done better. <laughs> Okay, so we just got done with the event and I was thoroughly impressed with the rivet. I felt like in doing my research, uh, I thought the trailer was going to be a lot smaller than it actually was. And I actually commented in my video, as you guys just saw, how the living space has a lot more room than I actually thought there was going to be. For myself, I'm about 6'2" and I had plenty of headroom inside the trailer. Now in the shower, there was a, it was a little tight. Um, I could see that being a little difficult for me to take a shower, but like we spoke about in the video, how there's a seat in there to where um, you could just sit down and, and take a shower that way. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where for me and the Cybertruck, because of my setup, if I'm getting more range, having to stop less, there's obviously a cool factor to the rivet. Um, those probably um, outweigh the lack of space in a shower. Um, I mean, usually when you're in a trailer and you're camping, you're not taking a 10 minute shower anyways. You're usually jumping in, jumping out just to conserve um, hot water you're not going in there and, and taking a long bath or shower. Um, so, you know, I'm not overly concerned about the shower, but overall, really cool trailer. And um, I'm really excited about what they're doing. Now, um, they did invite me up to Santa Barbara, to their corporate headquarters, to look at how they build the trailers, um, to also look at the other two models that they do sell. Um, so I'm going to take them up on that offer. I need to just um, figure out logistics and when we can get up there, when they're available, because I know right now they're kind of going on a, on a tour of showing off the rivet. Um, I believe they're in San Diego, they're going to Arizona, and I believe they're going to Texas as well. So for anybody who lives out in those areas, um, keep a lookout, follow their social media, go to their website. And check them out and see when they're going to be in town for you because this is really something that you're going to want to look into and check out if you're 
definitely concerned about weight and efficiency, this is a, a really great choice for you. So thanks again, guys, for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you guys have a good day.